This is how you crush it with the Catalan in just 31 moves. So this is Jan Nepomnesi against Kirill Alexenko. It was played in the last candidate cycle and I'm having a look at this one because it shows just how dangerous Nepo is. And he's going to be playing in this next candidates tournament starting in June this year. He's qualified because he came runner up in the last world championship. He challenged Magnus Carlsen, of course, and lost quite convincingly. So I don't want to see him winning this candidate, so I want a new opponent for Magnus. But of course, Nepo is going to be very dangerous, can beat anyone on his day, very well prepared as well, given his recent experiences. So one to watch out for, very dangerous player. Let's see what happened in this game. Nepo kicks off with pawn to c4 here. So starting with this English opening, we had knight f6, pawn to g3, and after e6, bishop to g2, we get this d5 and we head down a kind of neo-Catalan structure as it's known, where it's a Catalan position but without the pawn on d4. So knight to f3 now played, we had a captures on c4, and now queen a4 check immediately recoups this pawn, you can go c6 there, knight b to d7 was chosen, the pawn was taken, and now pawn to a6 played. So this is preparing b5, picking up a tempo on the queen, and then you get bishop b7, completing your queenside development some more. So Nepo drops back, anticipating that b5. And now if you go b5, it's not so good because knight e5 is coming. You open this diagonal, and if you block with knight d5, which is the standard response, then this knight sits on c6, you're blocking this pawn, it's a backwards pawn, not a fun position for black. So that's why pawn c5 was played first, very standard move. And now if you go castles here, black can actually achieve this b5 move in one, because this time knight e5 is not so good, you can go knight d5, and if knight c6, well the queen's coming to b6. There's no pawn on c7 anymore. So none of this stuff is so good. Now castles for white here is a perfectly respectable way to play. But what Nepo does is knight c3. And this plays against b5. Because now if you go pawn to b5, knight e5 is a real pain for black. Because here if you try and block with knight d5, well of course you can take that one. The knight already came to c3. You're winning a pawn here. Best is actually starting with knight takes on f7. Really good position for white. So that's why we didn't have pawn b5 played immediately in this position. But here Kirill missteps. So what you really have to be doing here is starting with something like queen to c7. And the whole idea is that you're trying to develop your queen side as quickly as you can. Say white castles here. Well then you can go pawn b6. And now if knight e5, opening up the bishop, well you've got time for bishop b7. It's covered by the queen here. So you're managing to unravel your pieces, it's a much better way for black to play. But what Kirill does is start with bishop to e7. And this isn't as precise, because after castles, he also castles his king. It looks so logical, but now white achieves d4. We had a captures on d4, the knight recaptures, and look at the difference in this variation compared to that other one I showed. Now you haven't achieved any b6 move, the bishop hasn't come to b7, this one's opened its eyes, and it's now really difficult to actually develop the black queen side. And if you ever get rook b8 in, let's say, trying to achieve b6 or b5, well then this knight will be landing on c6 the moment you move this pawn. So big development problems now for black, already white's a lot better. So queen c7 now played, the rook came to d1, this rook came to d8, and now bishop to e3 completes the development and also sets a small tactic here. So if you play the very natural looking knight g4 hitting that bishop, you're actually running into this knight d5 move. You're opening up the queens here, looking down at each other. Now best here is for black to actually take on c2, and then you have this swish and zoog of takes the bishop with check. Now you're not actually winning a piece because the king can come to f8. And if I briefly play this line through, so you take the queen on c2, black could take on e3, knight recaptures, king recaptures, 
but then this rook comes to the c-file and the problems remain for black here. The knight's coming to c4, this pawn still can't move, this bishop's a monster, big development issues. So that's why we didn't have this knight g4 move and it gives an idea of the themes in the position, the difficulty developing, the knight d5 stuff, and that's why knight b6 was played. So Kirill wants to open up this light squared bishop here. He moves the knight out of the way. This rook came to the c file and now he could have considered bishop to d7. It was another way to play, another way to try and develop, but it's still not beautiful. But instead he goes for pawn to e5. Now it's an ugly looking move because you give the f5 square, but his whole idea is now he can chop that knight off, get rid of that piece looming over his position, the queen recaptures, and at least he's gotten rid of that bad bishop stuck back on c8. So the knight now came to c4, it hits Nepo's bishop, also hits the b2 pawn, but bishop g5 now, great move, pressuring the king side and also setting a trap so if you take on b2, once again, we've got this knight d5 theme. You hit the queen now with two pieces here, and that's actually just really impossible to cope with. I mean, say you come to d6, for example, to still keep an eye on your bishop. Well, now we can take here with check. We open up this rook to the queen. The knight's defended by the bishop. The whole thing's collapsing for black. So this pawn on b2 is immune. And that's why instead Kirill captures on d1 with check. And here the knight recaptured. It holds this pawn now, but more importantly, Nepo opens up this c rook. All his pieces are playing here. And now there's a threat to go b3, but Kirill tries to deal with that tactically. So he goes rook to d8 here. And now if pawn to b3, which Nepo didn't play, probably the follow-up move would have been queen to a5 with the idea being that if you take with your rook, well now you lose your own knight with check. And if you take with the pawn here, then the queen can check from e1, bishop f1, you pick up the knight here. Now this is still actually good for white after the rook swap off, the queen can come to c8 with check, you can pick up on b7, white still has an advantage, but Nepo didn't want to go in for these complications. Instead he played much more simply, he just captured on f6 here, the bishop recaptured, and he's given up that bishop pair for a very concrete reason. This one now lands on e4. You're threatening this pawn here, and you can't go g6, or you lose this bishop on f6. So instead, queen a5 was played. Same ideas of coming down here. So the knight came to c3. Once again, knight takes on b2, really does nothing because the queen's taking here with check, the knight's coming into d5, it opens the c-file for the rook. So instead, king f8 was played. Prophylaxis against takes on h7. Now the knight hit d5 anyway. And this is another excellent move from Nepo because if Kirill takes this one, it looks like you're picking up two minus for the rook, good for black, but then we have this queen c8 check problem. No matter how you block with queen or bishop, then you're losing your knight on c4, white's an exchanger, winning this position. So we didn't have that takes on d5. Instead, b5 was played, securing the knight on c4, but now simply takes on h7, and there's actually a threat of mate here with queen h7. This knight covering the e7 square, you can't go g6, or you lose your bishop, of course. So that's why the rook had to chop. This was unavoidable. The bishop recaptured, and now white's an exchange ahead, although queen d2 does give some counterplay. Can you see the best response here for white? And if you're enjoying this video, do hit that like button, let me know, and consider subscribing to the channel to never miss my candidates coverage. So here Nepo played, rook takes on c4. Excellent move, because after the pawn recaptures, he cements this one on d5, Yes, black can pick up here and actually restore the material balance, but the problem is check comes, king e7, the queen slides over, and both of the white pieces, bishop and queen, are dominating their counterparts, and this king's in big trouble. So there's a threat to check from c7, that would actually lead to mate in combination with the bishop, so queen b6 covers, but now you drop the pawn on c4. We had queen b5 trying to get those ones off the board, but simply check. The queen blocked, 
Queen c5 check, and this was actually the final move of the game. Kirill resigned. He has a couple different moves here. Say, for example, he moves the king. Well, now you can check like this. Say queen c7. Well, we're picking up a second pawn. Still a dominant position for white. It's game over. If you enjoyed this one and want to see my other candidate previews, click here. Thanks for watching. See you soon.